Yeah, one last time. Yeah, yeah. 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 everywhere but where we need it. Oh, looky here. Is it real? Oh my. That's not mine. And I don't think it's fake. It wasn't there when I took a picture a while ago. It's not real, is it? <laughs> it's real. Is it? Yeah. That's a real tarantula. That's a real tarantula. Remember the first little palooza that we got? Why did he just get up there? He's trying to warm up, I guess. It don't look real. Okay, who put the tarantula on the Dutch oven? Oh, is that one of those? That was Eric. Is that part of the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. That was Eric. <laughs> I wonder what you're doing when you come by here and trip through here. I'm for Dutch oven loving. Okay, so I'm Billy. I'm Rhonda. We're Strong's Adventures. To, um, to hold co coals on top. No. I'm just going to sit down and let her take Look, over this. This I, is working. I, I, I like to, this. I wanted to start with basic. basic. Coarse salt. Put it down in there. And you can use a half a potato save your fingers and yeah rub that around there and that'll get off get it off and then you'll need to re-season it which you need to put a light coat of oil we actually like to use grapeseed grapeseed oil olive oil try not to use vegetable oil because it gets gummy and it and any any kind of oil that you use like that will get gummy it can get rancid and Especially if it, it will make fat. your food taste like that and that's not good yeah because it's going to get gummy and it's going to get gummy like that and that's not good kind of gross but a light coat and then wipe off the excess and then tell them how to got to heat it up yeah you want to heat it up before you get ready to put the oil on there and you want to put a light light coat you want to put it on there and then kind of wipe it off it's not, you're not really wiping it off it's kind of wiping it in and then put it in your oven or on your fire and you want to heat it up to about 400 degrees for a couple hours and It'll suck right in there and get all nice and shiny and be ready to go. Be non-stick. Don't you have to do it multiple times though? You can, yeah. That you, helps. It builds a patina. It builds so up like a patina. For one that's messed up, you would take the rust off and then you would use the light oil. Yeah, if you were going to take it down to bare bones, yeah, we'd say at least three coats <coughs> uh, separately. Five and a half coats build that oil on and then what do you do? Yeah, when we're at home, we, it, well, unless it's like 100 degrees outside, we'll put it in the oven on what, 450? Four, 400, 450. Something like that, and then heat, what, at least 30 minutes? No, about an hour. An hour? About an hour. And then he'll turn it off and just let it gradually come down to temperature, and then we pull it out when it's cooled off. And then you do it again if it needs it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if after you cook, we've you know we got these little scrapers and stuff. If you like, we're just gonna clean it, and it wasn't bad. You know, you just clean it up with this, or uh, there's a brush. Um, there's this uh, chainmail type kind of things. So you don't want to use soap on it, but you want to be able to get all no. The hang food on, all that is it. a myth. You can use soap on cast you iron. You always beat me every time. Because, because she uses a lot of soap. A little bit of soap is not bad for cast iron. As long as it doesn't take your patina off. A lot of soap, when you're washing your hands and you want a little soap on there, a little soap will do, not a lot. <laughs> anyway, I've always been told to find a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> see his perspective. Well, what? see, a little dab will do you. Not. There you go. <laughs> a little drop. Yeah, a drop. Three drops like a is drop. too much. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs>
Just enough to make some bubbles. That's good. Unless, see, he's always told me, unless it's got rust on it and you're trying to get all that off, you know, you can use a lot then. But then you're going to build up your layers again, so it doesn't matter. But if you're trying to protect your patina and not have your food stick, you don't want to use a lot of soap. So I've got a question. So I've got a lid, like you said, the paper towel trick. That's awesome to know that because my lid is starting to stick and I'm noticing condensation as I'm traveling now. Right. So now I know how to do it. So what do I do? I need to clean it, make sure it's all good and not rusted. Do I need to reseason the lid and do that? And if it's it if it's got a little bit of rust in there, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and reseason it. And then I I usually kind of wad these up and I twist it because like if you just fold it, you know, over time it'll compress and it won't, right. you know. So I kind of twist it and make sure that it kind of bumps it up a little bit. That's an awesome trick. And then just lay one inside there just to trap the any condensation that, that does get in there. You can just lay one inside there and put two or three on between the lid and the pot. Have you ever tried to use those little bags? <coughs> I don't know. We've never. We've never tried that, but that's a good idea. I guess as long as it said it was safe to eat. But. Yeah, yeah. If I get them in with like eating bread, and then Satan will pick in it. They might work with my. Yeah. Stuff. We've never tried that, but that okay, might. Work. I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. I'll get back with you. What's today's prices on each one of those? Mm. Yeah, well, you know, because of COVID and, and demand and all that, they have gone up because um, we used to be able to get one like this one for about 54 <laughs> and I just spent 64 on this one before we came. How much was that? 64. But when we went to Bucky's, it was 54. But I used to be able to get the 10, you know, for under $40. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's, you know, it's like everything it's going on yeah bucky's is a good place to buy cast iron yeah i guess they buy it in bulk and they you know or maybe they already have a stock or something but when i was looking for this before we came it was hard to find anything under 60. if you like light you can go to the pan that's yes, right yes yes like dan got to go see the pan man yeah that, that's the factory, and then they have the factory outlet by there, and then they have the factory outlet in Sevierville, and they have the factory outlet in Pigeon Forge, which I'm not allowed to go to by myself. <laughs> Unattended, yeah. That's where I go. I love that store. That is a cool store. Um, they, they also make these, uh, like, inserts if you were going to, like, do a dessert or cake or cornbread or whatever. It's basically... Uh, an oven pa paper liner but they're only eight in here and they're real expensive so you know on Amazon especially with all the air fryers and stuff now of course those probably have the holes in them but that it won't matter that much but but I buy these solid ones that um, like the professional cake bears bakers use and um, I'll put that down in the bottom if we're doing biscuits or bread or anything like that or desserts um, that you can just pull up out of there uh, and for cornbread, I can cut a sheet in strips and put like, make an X pattern in there first and then put this on top. And then you can score the edge with a knife and um, have a partner help you pull that out of there. And uh, easy removal. Yeah, it It makes the cleanup a lot easier. They also have foil. Um, Insert, yeah. Inserts. They're rigid, like almost like an aluminum, you know, pie pan, but they're real tall uh, sides to it. You can put that in there for um, more of the liquidy type stuff, stews and stuff like that. So why are you putting it on top? You want an even, an even bake for another. Yeah. It's yeah. If like you're gonna bake, on. you want the heat on the top, less on the bottom, more on the top. If you're gonna stew, fry, you want all the heat on the bottom. Because you want to be able to brown the top so your biscuits or your cornbread or whatever. So you have to have that heat on top. Can I use those canned biscuits out of the store? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yeah. That's you what we use a lot. Yeah.
I mean, we can do the homemade ones, but it's a whole lot easier to whop a can of biscuits on the side of that table there and throw them in. So, Billy, how much of this is guesswork as far as temperature to get this started, or do you just know how many coals go on the top and bottom? Well, I kind of know, but Eric, I'm glad you asked. They make an app for that. <laughs> He's going to tell you, he's looking it up. But you plug in the size of the oven you're using and what temperature you need it to. You don't want to burn your hands. Safety first. Safety first. From the nurse. Yep, from the nurse. Safety first. You want a good pair of leather gloves. Now, Lodge sells a pair of leather gloves that say Lodge on them for about thirty dollars. Well see secret here, if you go to Harbor Freight, it's the same pair of gloves for about five dollars. But it doesn't say lodge. But it don't say lodge on it. But yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You can get a Sharpie for two dollars and write lodge on there. <laughs> that's right, you got it. Uh, We'll have it going for you. <laughs> so what's it, how do you know how long, I mean, I guess the recipe says you can bake it for 40 minutes or whatever, and you just go with that? <laughs> it's, it's a guideline. If you're looking, you're not cooking. Yeah. But. I love that. I stole that from somebody, it's okay. You can use it if you need to. <laughs> C. Dub Butch Welch, not our C. Dub, said, if you can't smell it, it's probably not done. If it smells burnt, it's probably burnt. <laughs> That's wisdom right there. Hey, Billy, can you tell them about the rotation process? And oh, yeah. Like that? That's the biggest No, thing. I need Frug to come up here and help me with that. <laughs> Frugal is really good at this. Thank you, Vicki. We almost forgot that. Well, he's, fixing, he's fixing to have to do it anyway. He would have remembered. Quick question. Does this work with, um, you know, the briquettes that they have? Or just charcoal? Uh, it'll work with briquettes. It'll work with uh, lump charcoal, real, real wood. wood. Yeah. Uh, I need to get my shovel. Well, Frig's showing how to, uh, what, what to do about the, the Dutch oven here. Do I remember? I mean, I remember, but you lift the. It is time to do it, so go ahead and, and do it. I don't remember what you. Oh, this is a big one. Hmm. Enough. That's what she <laughs> <laughs> so you want to pick up the Dutch oven and turn the Dutch oven a quarter turn. Quarter turn. Quarter turn. Yeah. And the lid, you want to turn the opposite the opposite way. A quarter turn. That way you don't have hot spots in your food. So you want to do that about every 15 minutes. Because he's going to get his shovel. <laughs> there you go. Woo, My favorite video you have is the... I know. You turn the lid, you turn the dutch. Turn the lid, you turn the dutch. Okay, I knew there was something. I know there was something. You turn the lid, you turn the dutch. The reason you want to turn it is to avoid the hot spots. Uh, if the, like right now the wind's blowing this way, this side of the Dutch oven is going to be a lot hotter than this side. And so by turning it, you get your food heated, you know, kind of equally all the way around. Okay, so this was 425. Do we have enough? Probably not. We'll see. We did a video on it too. How to ruin a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> How to ruin a perfectly good shovel. And why? <laughs> Anybody know why there's holes in it? It's so that you can. 
It's so that you can get coals and not the ash. Yeah. Because the ash kind of acts as an insulator and it doesn't let your food cook. So when I'm cooking with my big hook set up, like over that, I'm not gonna go digging it right now because nobody wants ash all over them. But you can scoop down into the fire, shake it out, get rid of all the ash, and then you have nothing but the coals. Okay. That's a great tip, thank you. Hey, I'll give you a hole saw when you get ready to leave. Sorry if that's fine. Not sure, huh? I gotta see how much I got for the top. Okay, you wanna tell them about the stack? While we're stacking? Yeah. Okay, so he's saving charcoal by stacking it this way because if we did it side by side, um, he'd have to have more charcoal. So he's putting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Use your mommy voice. I'm sorry. Okay, so he's saving charcoal by stacking this little one on top of the bigger one because we would be putting stuff on the bottom of that little one anyway. And so the ones on top of that but bigger one can act like the bottom base cook for the. The little one so that way you're using less charcoal mm -hmm. yeah well that's why it's good to have a table because he can pull this one over here turn the bottom one and then as he's placing it back on there he would replace you know to go ahead and do the turn I bought this one. I do have one that I made that's a little higher and a little heavier and yeah. <laughs> they do. They come off and they fold up. This one is a camp chef. Um, actually found it at Cabela's in the clearance aisle because the box was damaged and I got it for about half the price. Oh yeah. Well, that's all folks.